Hey, how's it going? Paul here from The Rusted Pixel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I used Cinema 4D to model and animate these stylized flames. So here's the original file that I was working with. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste these flames over to a clean file so we can see what's happening. So here we have the flame and it's just on its own and we can see what's happening. It's animating the whole time, the flames move themselves and then I'm just scaling them up and down and I'm also scaling them or moving them up and down just so they have that little jump so they kind of pop off. So you can kind of, if you watch the cursor you can see it just moves up. That gives it kind of an extra bit of movement as it kind of jumps up out of the, the engine I guess. So I'm just going to stop this animation for one moment. And what it actually is, is it's just some simple splines with some um, pose morph tags. And it's pretty much going to be five steps and we'll get it there. We'll have this nice little looping animation playing over and you can use this for any kind of candle flame, fire flame, anything you need. Uh, this will pretty much work for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pose morph to each of these splines. Before I do that, I'll just move my object manager over so you can see where this tag is. Character tags and down to pose morph. Selecting pose morph, I just have my attributes manager locked. So select the tag and you have all your options here. I'm going to pick points. So what it does is it brings up a new window and now we're going to be editing our point. So we've got our base pose, which is just the original pose. And then this is just pose one. So I'm going to add two more poses. And just to make it clear, I'll just rename these. So this will be pose one, pose two and pose three. So all we have to do is make slight changes to this. It doesn't have to be too crazy. I'm just going to jump to my, um, hmm. I think it's front view. Yes. Now with pose one selected, I'm going to grab my move tool. So I'm going to lock this just so it doesn't keep disappearing on me. With pose one selected, I'm in edit mode. And I'm just going to start changing the shape of this flame. So let's make it a little bit more narrow and a little bit more kind of jagged looking, I guess. So it's a little bit sharper looking. I'm going to make sure to move all the points rather than leaving any of them static. That kind of doesn't really change between the two poses. It doesn't look as exciting. So maybe this one's a little bit thinner, but a little bit sharper looking. That's pose one. If we jump back to pose two, this was the original one. Two and three haven't changed just yet, but you can see the difference between one and two. So let's make a slight difference on two. Not too crazy difference. I kind of like how this looks. Let's maybe bring that shape closer there. We'll imagine these flames are just getting a little bit blown this way. Again, I'm just moving all the points so it just doesn't get a bit static and boring anywhere. And maybe this one moves out a bit. Um, so one and, and two, and then back to three. Let's just make let's make this one a little bit shorter. So let's imagine these flames are coming down a bit. So you can add as many poses as you like. I just found when I was working on this that three was a nice number to kind of blend between. Let's bring that. No, I don't want to lose the shape entirely. This pose here might be a little bit too extreme for what I'm looking for. It really depends on, on your needs and what you need to do. But to me, this kind of looks like it's a bit too wild. It looks like it's changed too much. So I'm just going to jump back. It's a big jump. You can see that these two are kind of close and then this one's a big change. But we'll, we'll roll with it and we'll see how it, how it looks. You can come back and edit these poses anytime and you can edit points anytime. Um, but for now, we'll see how this works. I'm going to hop over to edit mode. Sorry, animate mode. And as you move the sliders, you can see it actually changes between it. And you can do a mix in between if you like. But what I found works best is to just kind of take it in steps. That is wild looking. <laughs> That's crazy looking. I'm not mad about that. I'm going to start on frame 10 anyways. Uh, I generally work in 24 frames per second, but you can keep it at uh, 30 if you wish. So I'm just going to swap over to 24. Selecting our pose morph tag again. Oops. Uh, I won't need to lock it anymore. I'm just going to pick any number here. I'm going to start animating on frame 10. So 
to animate these, you hit record sliders. You can record them each if you want here, but I'm just going to record all three sliders as they are. So record sliders. I'm going to jump forward about four keys, four frames, and bring down the first slider. Record. Four. So it's, it's quite uniform at the moment. Record. Down. Record. Um, I guess we'll bring the second one up then, just for a bit of variation, rather going back to the first one. Record. Now I'm going to try and bring it back to a point where it was back on this one, so I can loop back. So I want the last pose to be this one. So with this pose here we have the top two, then we have the middle two. I guess it would be nice to have it change back to here. So we're getting a kind of a nice flow shape to it. It kind of looks like it's it looks like it's blowing towards the camera and away from it again. So we don't need to do too many, but it's nice that we started with, if I just like that, the, the tree sliders at 100%, and we finish with the tree sliders at 100%, because that's going to help us later on, so we don't have to keep doing this the whole way along. Now that pose there is, to me, a bit too much. I'm not crazy on this shape. It, it's not the nicest shape, this big jagged piece sticking out here and this one here, but for tutorial purposes, we'll just keep going with it. Um, before we start extruding this, let's loop this animation so we don't have to constantly keep like, you know, dropping in keys. If you want to and make it look more varied and it doesn't loop around, you can go ahead and keep swapping the, the sliders out to get a, a look that you like. But I knew that I was going to be animating this where they were going to be popping up and down, they were going to be disappearing. I only needed the motion for a few seconds, so it was going to be hard for the viewer to spot that I was looping. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over to my window, F Curves Manager. And you can see here we have some nice curves happening, some nice shapes. We have them all selected. So I'm just going to make this so you can actually see this a little better. So say we had um, 160 frames and we didn't want to kind of keep doing this over and over and over again. What we do is we select our points. Oops, let's select them here. And you can see here in the Attributes Manager, I'll just move that up. It's set to constant on before and after. Now I started the animation on frame 10 and I'm like, oh, rather than moving things around, I would just like this to repeat the whole time. So if this is like a nice burning candle or just a flames in a fire, something, it's off to the side and you just want it to be looping and you don't want to worry about this and you want to get on with the rest of your scene while like, you know, fire kind of like burns in the background. This is a nice thing you can do. You can just start the animation anywhere around frame 10 or whatever, just to get your bearings so you like it. And then with the before, let's swap, swap it to repeat. And we can actually repeat the time, the number of times it repeats. So at the moment, it repeats just once, but we can set it two, three, and you can see, if you can see it there in the, if it's showing up in the screen recording, the animation is looping. So if we start here, and I'm just gonna move that out of the way for a second, and press play. So the animation loops up until that point because we didn't repeat after. So again, I'm just gonna make this a little bit shorter. It's kind of hard with so little screen space to record. So we have to make sure we have them all selected. And the after, let's set it to repeat. It's only repeating once, as you can see. Let's have it repeat. Five times gets us clear of our 160 mark frames. And you can see now you're just getting this nice kind of like constantly happening round kind of animation. If you're not crazy on that, of course, you can kind of come in here. If, it, if it's too similar looking for you, you can, rather than having this repeat, you could maybe just copy these keys, move forward, paste these keys, and then just come in here and change some of these ever so slightly. Oh, let's still zoom in. <laughs> you can move some of these points down. You can kind of start playing with these curves. You can play with them one by one if you want. You know, this is coming down to zero and up to 100%. Maybe here it doesn't come down to zero uh, percent. Maybe here it's not as many keys. So it's three. Maybe we could just bring this up. So you can see it's repeating here and not here. It's repeating here and not here. That'll maybe add just enough variation. 
it's kind of hard to spot it's so subtle what we've done but you can copy and paste it a few times over and then make some adjustments so that it's not a complete loop so that's just just a, a quick suggestion there the last step that we're going to do is extrude it i mean an extrude object drop it in and we only need about two centimeters even one centimeter or even less 0.5 and then if we have our two objects in we just click on hierarchical and you know you can kind of work away I'll just swap over to um, garage shading so that's pretty much it I mean like it's drop a pose morph tag on there um, edit the points animate the points into your f-curve manager to repeat the animation and you're done and you have this kind of like pretty cool looping animation and if we just jump back to the original scene which it's still playing um you can see here this is how it kind of turned out in the end these little guys are just shooting up and then scaling away with display tags to turn them on and off for visibility so yeah um i hope you enjoyed this tutorial um it was supposed to be shorter than it was it got a little bit rambly sorry for my cold as well um I don't know what tutorials to make so if you see any of my work or there's anything I make any of my personal work any of my projects that you like give me a shout drop a message in the comments below let me know what you like on my work that you would like me to show how I made and uh, yeah I'd be happy to make a tutorial on any requests so uh, thanks very much for checking this out and have a good one